All right, I know you just got done watching the video about how to lesson plan, but I just wanna make sure I go over that. Start small, take your traditional lesson plan and think about your objectives, your assessments, and how you plan on laying out your lesson. Then write it out. Here is what I need to do. This is what I'm gonna be looking for. Here are the items that I need to create and find. The next thing that I showcased during that lesson planning video was the different studios. Let's just go in and explain those studios to you. So a small group instruction is what we call a mini lesson. In that small group instruction, I'm going to start to differentiate. I'm going to start to build those student relationship, academic relationships to really help encourage your students to keep working. So it's really important to have those because you will get way more out of a lesson and understanding your students when you're meeting with them small group versus teaching to the whole class. Next, I talked about the independent studio. The independent studio is where the kids are going to be doing like a worksheet, an activity that's going to showcase what they learned. You can see here that this student is doing some little independent cards where she's pulling out of a bag, picking a question, answering it, and you can see her timer. The timer is set so she knows she has about 10 minutes to complete that activity. Next, let's talk about some digital content. Digital content is where the students are learning, relearning, or it's adaptive. So if you're learning, maybe it's a teacher-created video through Edpuzzle. If you're relearning, maybe you send them to Khan Academy. And if it's adaptive, you might be using the Freckle program where it goes up and down based on the level of the students. So digital content is going to mimic what the teacher is teaching, but in just a different format. And then finally, I talked about those future ready skills. This is what gives a lot of our teachers a little bit of a heart problem. Like, ah, oh, what are you talking about future ready? Do I have some code? No, you don't have to code, although coding is a really good program to put into future ready. But what we're talking about are the students creating, collaborating, communicating. Look at this photo. The students are collaborating and creating a poster together that they can use for their language arts project. That's what we're talking about at Future Ready Studios. So those are my different studios. When you're setting it up, when you're building your lesson, you really want to think about what that is going to look like in your small group instruction. What are you going to be doing in independent practice? What are you going to do in your digital content? And of course, what are you going to be doing in your whole group? Ending, closure, so on and so forth. And don't forget about vocabulary. Vocabulary is always a great little extra toss in that the kids can work on when they're not working with you. All right, let's talk about timing. This first photo is of a teacher time. In a 50 minute class period, this is what the teacher will do for that whole 50 minutes. They'll do a 10 minute introduction and maybe attendance. Remember that introduction, we're just giving snippets of what's going to happen. Maybe it's a read aloud, maybe it's an example math problem. Then for 30 minutes, the teacher's going to be meeting in small groups, pulling students back based off of what skill they need to focus in on. Finally, they're going to wrap up the lesson with a whole group and next steps. What does it look like from a student point of view? In 50 minutes, this is what it would look like. 10 minute whole group instruction, 10 minute small group, independent practice, digital content, all of those things are 10 minutes, and then closing activity, which could also include that future ready. 10 minute increments, the kids will rotate from one studio to the next. If you are a block school or if you're an elementary teacher who has 90 minutes to teach language arts, this is my, what your schedule would look like. You might be doing a whole group instruction for 10 minutes, doing 30 minutes of a small group instruction, checking in with the students for five minutes. Then you're going to come back around for 30 minutes doing another set of small group instruction. Then you're going to close it up and you're going to do an exit ticket. The reason why there are two small group instructions is because the first one is going to be based off of the pacing guide for that current year, meaning this is where we need to learn, this is what we need to do, and I want to make sure in that small group that I can hit those targeted learning objectives. The second time the kids meet with me in a block period might be reteaching or making sure they understand the concept that I taught for that day. What does this look like from a student point of view? So this is the 90 minute class period that the students are going to go through. 10 minute introduction, 10 minute with a small group with the teacher. They might spend 20 minutes with independent practice. They might spend another 10, 20 minutes on digital content, 15 minutes doing a choice board. This is what it might look like for the students if they have longer amounts of time to work on their content. One thing that we need to really think about is when we're putting together blended learning that we give the students a checklist. That checklist is key because it's going to keep the kids organized. What did I work on? What do I still need to do?
This teacher here, a seventh grade teacher from Cypher ISD, she is signing off on the checklist. So when the kids are done with their small group instruction, they come up to her, they sign it off, they give her one key thing that they learned, she gives them back their checklist. She's also doing a double check to make sure that they're doing the work that they're supposed to. Checklists are key. In a virtual classroom, build a checklist that the kids can mark off on a Google Doc showing that they got things done. In a traditional classroom or the new normal classroom, give them a paper copy checklist that the kids can mark off and they can demonstrate that they got things done for the day. Okay, one thing that we really need to think about in the fall is training the parents, especially lower elementary or even high school teachers, training them how to upload how to use Google Classroom, how to make sure to check in on the student's work, and demonstrating what a checklist looks like. These are things that the teachers and parents need to work on together to make sure that no matter if we're in a A-B schedule, a virtual schedule, or a new normal, that the parents are gearing up for what school might look like for their students. So spend time training your parents as well as training your students. Last thing I wanted to share out is that we are offering virtual workshops. These virtual workshops are showcased in a blended learning environment where teachers learn about blended learning while participating in a blended learning environment. We're going to be talking about student engagement. We're going to be talking about how to get started with blended learning and designing it to meet the needs of your school. And then also we're going to be doing workshops on differentiated instruction. How can you take this small group instruction and really differentiate the content for the students? All of these can be found on our website. We're booking now, so please feel free to reach out to us to book your school workshop today. Thank you guys for attending. I'm glad you were a part of the webinar or you're re-watching this video because you enjoyed what we had to share about blended learning. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We're here to help. Let us know what we can do to help support your blended learning journey. Thanks guys.